right, so we're focusing on array methods today, and namely map and for each this morning. So, I just want to write a very basic function to begin with, and all I want to do is input some numbers and double each of those numbers. How would we do that using a for each loop? So I want to return an array of 2, 4 and 6 as numbers. Say again, Shimon, I didn't quite catch that. Values multiplied, so do you want to do no, uh, what uh, value? Uh, uh, Let something uh, return. I thought you want to return something, okay? Mm -hmm. So inside of there, you want to return. Okay, so what arguments does for each take? Anyone know? A callback function, yeah, yeah. If in doubt, it's probably a callback function, yeah? So let's, let's do a callback function to begin with. And then we can return something, if we want. We need some inputs for our callback function. If we've got some values for each, what? Value makes sense to me, yeah? We might need an additional argument. We can decide that at a later point. So if we've got a value, what do we want to return? Value times two. Value times two, uh-huh. All right. So will that have updated the values array? Could I then return values or do I just return the result directly of the for each function. Would that work? Yeah, what do you say? Okay. Let me run the code. And we're going to get undefined. Yeah. So we're returning the result of the for each function, but we're getting undefined. <coughs> I could say return anything, please and not even have an input and run that and we still get undefined why don't know so if you look at the document go on yeah, yeah. Still, within the for loop. still within the for loop Mm, sort of, but we're still we've still got a return up here, so surely we should be returning something. Yeah. But if you looked at the documentation of for each, you will find that for each always returns undefined. Always, 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 always. Yeah. So you might think, well, what's the point of that? Well, inside we could still write a function that modifies the values array. Yeah. So if I did something like put a value in and then we do um, yeah we essentially do the array and we index it so let's pass in an index and then set it equal to the value times two yeah max is with me at least nice of course if i run that again it's still undefined so we don't want to return the result of the for each loop we want to return values and hopefully now, this function has run for each value and multiplied it by two. And it has, awesome. Yeah, so it's a little gotcha 
when using for each, if you try and return the result of a for each function directly, then you're always going to get undefined. So you just use the for each loop to do something in your code without returning a specific value. So you must perform the operation and then return the result that you want if you're using for each. So in this case it modifies the original. Yeah, so you might want to instead do let copy I suppose call it values, right? Let copy values equals how can we copy an array quite easily? Yeah, the three dots. What's that actually called? The spread operator. Yeah, I just say no idea. <laughs> it's called the spread operator or, or the three dots or an ellipses. Yeah, however you want to call it. Um, but using in this case, it will spread out each of the values in the original array into a new array container. So it's essentially made a copy. And then what we can do instead is we can loop over the copy. It doesn't matter what one we loop over, in fact, but let's keep it all consistent. And then return the copy values. So the copy values will still be 2, 4, and 6. But if we wanted to return the original values, we still could. And they'd still be 1, 2, and 3. Yeah, so we haven't changed the original input there. So that's now become a pure function, right? If we put the same inputs in, we get the same result every time. Whereas if we had it the old way, and I did double, uh, yeah, hold on, that's, I'm gonna have to write it slightly differently, and I can say let values equal one comma two comma three and then I say double values like that which is often how we do it and then I'll call it again what's the result going to be of line 10 now is it still going to be two four and six yeah. you reckon I reckon it's going to be 4, 8, 12. It's double and double again, yeah? Because it's not a pure function. Even though we've called the same function, the inputs have technically changed, yeah? Because we've modified the original array values here. So that's why it can be quite confusing if we modify values and arrays directly. So that's why it's a better approach to not modify our inputs. And do the hold on why that's I need to redo right I don't know but anyway make a copy so do a um, let copy and then spread it out uh, what do we have values and then change all those to copy and it's a lot better oh that doesn't work Check it works. Yeah, cool. So can you return the copy straight away? What do, what do you mean? Uh, return here? Mm -hmm. No. Why can't we return there, guys? If I return there on line four? Undefined. undefined, yeah. It's always undefined. Yeah, that's the point we're trying to make about four mm -hmm. each. So we can't return the result of the for each method directly. Okay. So great. Yep. Um, what, you did the match method yesterday. Uh, so what's the main difference is that the match one will create a, a copy and then this one sort of um, alters the original array. No, I mean, yeah, essentially that's it, right? So we're going to move on to the map in a second and then we'll talk oh, about sorry, the differences. Okay. I'm getting yeah. Um, but, yeah, okay, let, let's check people just understand that first and then we'll move on straight away onto map, yeah? So any questions about what we've done with for each? So the key take, go on, yeah? Do we need the index? Well, if I don't have the index, 
how am I going to modify the original array? Yeah, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit how I'd modify the original array. I, we can't just do that. I don't think we can just do that. I'm going to try, but yeah. Um, and then return copy again. Copy's now undefined. That's a bit weird. Um, what have I done? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Didn't move that. Yeah. So that hasn't done anything. Yeah. Value times two. We haven't stored the multiplied value in any in any array or in any reference or in any variable, right? So that's why we need to reference the array, reference the index, so that we're changing each value in the array. We can't do that without having our second argument in for each, which is the index. So this is definitely the more complicated of the two, but I've shown it first so that we can see probably why you're going to prefer map for most operations. Yeah. Um, let's try and do the same thing, but with the map method. And I've got the answer there for you, which is annoying. Um, Yeah. So what does map do? It takes each element in the array and performs some function on it again, or performs some transformation on it. So how will I double each number this time? Function, yeah. So I'm going to do an arrow function. Did you say we need an input max? I shall return numbers times two. Return numbers times two. Okay. Number, singular. All right. Is that right then, guys? We need to put the number in the same Yeah. At the moment, number's not defined, yeah? So if I run that, we get an error saying number is not defined because we haven't given an input to our function yeah so let's make sure we put number in there and again the same as find and filter number just assumes the relative element in the array yeah so number on the first iteration will be one second iteration two third iteration three cool now that need a return absolutely because again we're going to get undefined now because we're not returning the result of map. But this time, we can directly return the result of map, as opposed to for each. So map will always return an array, and it will always return an array of the same length as the array that you're calling it on. So if we had three elements to begin with, it has three elements at the end. On the board challenge yesterday, Cam asked a really interesting question, and he said, well, what happens if we say, if we add an if condition in there? So something like if uh, num greater than two, then multiply it by two. Is it something like that, Cam? Is that, is that a good enough example, or is it more complicated than that? Um, I'm just waiting for you to to catch up. Uh, um, So we've got a condition. So Cam's argument was if we had an if condition like that, will it just return? Huh? Oh, sorry, I called it now. Right, yeah, rather than number. Thank you. Yeah, so Cam's question was, if we have a conditional statement there, will it just return the single number that matches that condition? You know, what's going to happen to the one and the two? 
Are they in the result and array or not? Has someone else just joined? Nick wants to join as well. Yeah, can you see now, Nick? Cool. I'll turn you off a bit, Max. You reckon it's going to break? There's no return. If the job breaks in two, the return will not break, it's not going to return anything. So that was the argument. We were saying, do one and two remain unchanged? Do one and two become undefined? Does it just not work? Maybe. I don't think maybe it's going to be undefined. Yeah, let's have a look. Because to my knowledge, map must return an array of the same length as the input. So it must return an array of three elements, but what the value of those is going to be is the question. Yeah, so we get undefined, undefined, and then the other one is doubled. Yeah? So even if we don't have any matching cases for the transformation that we've applied, it will just automatically fill that element with an undefined. How could we easily fix this so that one and two are still in the resultant array. So. Yeah, we could have an else and just return the number, oh yeah, number as it was, all right? And that would work, one, two, and six. Do we need the else? No. No, we don't need the else. Why do we not need the else? <laughs> yes, <laughs> we do, but it's not really saying why I don't need the else. Um, yeah, the if is a statement after if the next um, line to run the I think Max said it, but in other words, conditional statements like this, if, well, the code inside is not going to run if the number is less than two, or the number is less than or equal to two, the line number five is not going to run. So it will just ignore it and it will jump down to line number seven. Yeah, automatically. So you don't really need an else condition. It's just the logic, yeah. And if the number is greater than two, well, it's going to run that line number five and it hits a return statement. So you can only, well, that's not strictly true, is it? I was going to say you can only have one return statement in a function. We've got two there, but you can only return the result of one return statement in a function. Yeah, so as soon as that line gets hit, the rest of the code doesn't run. Yeah, it exits out of that loop. Make sense? Okay. Yeah? Cool. Good question, though, Cam. It's nice to think about these things. What happens if we mix it up and throw in some unexpected input in there? Um, go on. Yep. So you're saying if value is greater than two, um, then we want to essentially do that stuff. Oh, why did it go there? If the value is greater than 2, then multiply it by 2. So what do you expect the result to be this time? It won't change. What, nothing will change? It's still going to be 1, 2 and 3, the copy? Uh, no. No? Okay. So what changes? So it's going to return 1, 2, and 6 inside yes. of an array as well. I agree with that, yeah? Because here we're modifying the array. So it still exists, and we're just modifying the last element. Yeah, for each by itself 
doesn't do anything. It doesn't have any inbuilt behavior. It just returns undefined. Yeah. Whereas map straight away creates a new array with all undefined elements inside. And then if parts of your logic transform those original elements, then you get some new values back. So we're still going to get one, two, six here. Yeah. We just haven't touched the one and the two. Could we say that? It, it it totally depends on your function. So we we don't necessarily have to use um, it, it just doesn't return anything. So it, it totally depends on whatever code you write inside of there. You might be transforming an array into an object, in which case it's not going to return an array at all. Okay. Yeah. You can say it definitively about dot map. Yes, but there's no real restriction with for each. Yeah. Why do you want to use the for each method instead of the map? Yeah, it's, it's used quite a lot for database operations when you just want to transform data and you don't want to return anything. It yeah. is uh, okay. a lot of da uh, data, so it means it's going to do quicker. That's an interesting point. Which one's quicker? Right? So you, you said maybe for each is quicker because it's not returning anything. Well, one of the articles I gave you, I think, this morning, probably before anyone arrived because you were locked out, um, was that one. So just talking about the performance of map versus for each. And it's essentially the same function as what we did, right? Yeah. And they tested it in various versions of Chrome. And these are the outputs. So the bar represents how many operations per second. So a higher bar is better. A longer bar, sorry, is better. Um, so for Android, the performance was obviously very similar. When Map was quite new, for each definitely had better performance, right? While the browsers were still implementing this new method, then the performance of for each was far, far better. Nowadays, if you've definitely got a modern browser on your system, hopefully you can see that Map is a lot more performant, well not a lot more, but is noticeably more performant than for each. Yeah, so... Um, so Map is better? Map is more performant, is, is better, yeah, in general. Yeah, there's always going to be exceptions, this is just uh, for this particular function, right? It's not always going to be better, but in general, yes, map is more performant. So, yeah, for each is often used just to modify things, and yeah, map is used to return an array of the same number of elements as the original array. So what we could do next is we could have a look at an operation in React that would map over an array and return a component each time. Yeah, and you'll be doing that, I think, in task 11 or 12. Um, I didn't quite get a chance to finish off these, so let's just put some data in here very quickly. And we've got... Just ha be having to think about how we could take this data, get it into our app.js, and then rather than writing six movie components, how could I just write a loop that returns a single movie component six times? Thank you. 
Okay, so we've got data with titles and images inside. Previously, we had this sort of component for our movie. And then we were, we refactored this, didn't we? So we had just six movies, three movies in each section. Um, so let's be pretty brave and just delete all of that. So firstly, how would I get my movie data inside of app.js? I'm going to delete all that. Don't need it anymore. How would I get this file's uh, array into app.js? Yeah, so I've exported it already. I've got an export default on the movie's data array. So I can just use an import statement. Import... Um, what should we call it? Let's just call it movie data. From. And where's it coming from? It's coming from here. So it's in the same folder. So I can just do dot forward slash for the same folder. And there it is, movie data, movies data array. Cool. So. Then I want to write a bit of JavaScript code. So I can put some curly braces. I want to say, take that movie data and then map it. I've already made a mistake, but hopefully someone's going to spot it. And inside of our map, what do we put? It says it right down there in the in the words in the description. Callback, yeah? Callback function. And this time, what do we want our callback function to return? Some JSX code and specifically the movie component. Make it self closing. So the layout's going to look a bit weird because we've got six and I haven't redone the CSS, but it's okay. We're just going to have six in one row for now. We can deal with that. Get rid of these. It's not going to work yet. We need to do a couple of other things. So, so the properties of the uh, object. Yeah. yeah. We need to send some props to the movie component, right? Previously, we had it written like this, image source and title. So we still need those props. However, there's nothing called the matrix in this file. And I don't want to hard code the title either. I want to get it from my array. How am I going to do that? Um, so, maybe like this where it's uh, movie data dot map, mm -hmm. and inside this open parentheses. Yep, so I need some inputs for my yeah, callback like function. Line movie. Yep, movie makes sense, right? We're looping over each movie. And, uh, so, first time the movie is going to be that object. <laughs> Movie.title, yeah. And 
this one will be movie dot IMG. Did I put IMG? I think I did. Yeah. IMG. Nice. You want to do what, sorry? Wrap by some HTML tag. Wrap by some HTML tag. Yes. What does that mean? What does it mean? Wrap by some HTML. What, what do you want to wrap? The whole movie data. This component. This component, movie. That is inside the map. Yeah. Why? Do I need six extra lists, or if I had a hundred uh, movies, uh, would I need a hundred extra lists? Uh, I'm thinking about this. Oh, list item. Mm -hmm. But we already inject all of that HTML code in. Okay. Um, so each one's going to be a figure, oh, an image with an overlay. So I don't think we need to have a list item in there as well, yeah? In general, just try and use as little markup as possible while still making sense. Cool. It's still not going to work and it's a very subtle error that most people miss. Uh, let's run it and see if we get any interesting feedback that helps us solve it. So let's do is that shortcut. Yes. Oh, not strap. Uh, Am I in the wrong folder? Yes. See the movies to movie. Okay, so I don't expect anything to display or we might get an error. Yeah, movie is not defined. Uh, that wasn't necessarily the error as I, I was expecting, but let's fix that, fix that one first. So we haven't imported the movie component. I obviously was a bit enthusiastic when I deleted those images. I also deleted our movie component. Uh, movie comes from movie, right? Probably with a capital M. Cool. Let's go back to the code. I mean, back to the browser. Yeah. Ooh, it's a bit of a weird error message, right? But in other words, something dot map is not a function so what it's trying to say is there is no map method attached to our movies data array at least that's how I interpret it so here it's saying there's something wrong with movies data it's not an array so if we go back to our file and see what we've exported what have we exported? An object. An object? No. Oh, what is a, a real object, sorry. No, we, if it was an array, it would work. But we have exported... Uh, no, not even text. We have exported a function. Uh, yeah? Look, export default function called movies data. So, if this is a function, I need to invoke it so that it returns an array. Yeah, the function returns an array, but the function itself is obviously a function. So we have imported a function called movie data, and then we just invoke it when we need. So now I'm hoping at least something should happen. I'm not quite sure what it's going to look like, but we're struggling to find the images, but we can at least see we've got six things on one row with their titles. So the map has worked, 
However, image source being movie image hasn't worked. Hmm. Props dot image. Ah, so it's props dot image, not image source. Yeah. So what does that mean? I need to change back in my app dot js. I need to do what? Sorry. The img to image. Well, this one. No, because movie.image is coming from the array, and that is definitely called img. So that bit was correct. Oh, sorry, not in it. Yes. So these are my props. Yeah, image source and title. I've passed in image source and title props. And I've referenced them as image and title. So it doesn't match up, yeah? Image needs to match up with, oh God, sorry, with image source. So let's call them both image. And now, we. I mean, there's no room on the page <laughs> because I've done six in one row. But yeah, we could have fixed that as, as well. But for the purpose of this demo, I, I think that's enough because the key thing was we're getting used to using map to return essentially anything we want, yeah? So, of course we said map returns always an array. So why can my HTML or my browser interpret an array and why don't I see it in some weird little square braces or something when I, square brackets when I go on the screen? Because React what to do with it? Because React or yet yeah, or the browser knows what to do with it. We can um what can we do? Yeah, we could return things as an array if we had adjacent elements as well. Like we could literally return an array of things like that. And I could just put a comma there because it is an array and return a second lot of JSX. That's also valid, right? To return an array like that. So yeah, JSX or the browser will just be able to interpret you having lists of things in your code and it will display them as just separate HTML elements. So it does not matter that map returns an array. That's fine. It will just separate them into separate elements for us. And maybe that looks a little bit less readable to you, but imagine you had 100 movies. Did you want to write the movie component 100 times? Probably not. That one line will work for six movies, 50 movies, 100 movies, 10,000 movies. It will work, yeah? Obviously, you've got to mess around with your CSS to make it look nice on the page, but it will make sure that you get the required number of movies displayed on the page. Yeah, so it's the next step in refactoring your code and making it drier and more reusable, yeah? Cool. Any questions? Um, once you export the data to the function, I'm not sure what is an array. Say that once more, Max. It's a bit broken, your, your speech, because of the connection. Why did you export the data as a function and not just as an array? OK, so why did I export a function and not as an array? Good question. Um, so we could have done let movie data equals an array and then you can't do export default like that because you can't have a let after your export default can you no doesn't like it uh, so instead you would have to Do something like 
Or B. Can I do it like that? I think so. Then that should now be an array. Go back to app.js, get rid of the invoking of the function, and hopefully it will still work. Yeah, okay, so you could do it either way, and that's probably simpler, isn't it, really, just to do that. Um, just trying to think of any performance advantages. Maybe because you're not actually running the code until you need it, if you export it as a function. Whereas the whole application has now got to store movie data in state for whenever it needs it. If you just have it like that. Um, but yeah, I can't think of a, a great reason to be honest. Maybe we'll ask Ricardo about that one. But it's another option. And of course, most data in production applications you'll store in a database anyway, so <laughs> it's kind of moot point, but um, yeah, it's good to know. Any other questions? All right, there's no specific map training on the platform. However, if you went to the arrays, training on intermediate, then you'll definitely find that question three and four can be solved best by using map. So if you want, we could do that one question now or we can leave it there and you can practice in your own time. Hands up if you want to practice now. Practice now, please. That's, did you say now, Max? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think you're the only one. So I think everyone else just wants to crack on, but I can. You, you don't mind practicing? Yeah. Okay, let, let's do one quickly then, yeah? All right, Max, you've, you've got your way. We're doing it. So, what are my inputs for this sort actors function? Objects. An array of objects, yeah? Just one single input, yeah? So, I need to just have not two inputs. I need to just have one single input and I could call it actors, yeah? Makes sense? We have an array of objects and they are all actors. We have their name and when they were born. Right. We need to sort them from youngest to oldest. So who's younger? Someone born in a lower number year or someone born in a higher number year? Higher, exactly. So we need to sort our numbers in descending order, yeah? And that would sort them by their age. Make sense? Cool. Yeah. How do we do that? Sort function. There's a sort method, yep. And if I just sorted it like that, will it sort them ascending or descending? Well, in fact, it won't be able to sort them because they're objects, right? So it doesn't make sense to try and sort objects. So we need to write a custom sorting function. And we can do that by essentially having actor 1, and actor 2, and then comparing them in some way. Um, yep. Yeah. Sorry, there are inputs into a custom sorting function. And just the two things that you want to compare. So I've written an arrow function there with two inputs. Actor one would be one of the objects and actor two would be a different object that we can compare. So we're doing a, a pairwise comparison, yeah? Um, now, our custom sorting function what are we going to do? Are we going to do actor 2 minus actor 1? Does that make any sense? Not, not really, right? Do your washing later, Max. I don't know if it was you, sorry, I'm singling you out. But some weird sounds coming over the speaker. 
we have to specify the more broad property. Yes, so we can't sort based on minusing an object from another object. It just doesn't make sense, yeah? We need to specify the actual age, the born property here, yeah? So how do I access the born property for each actor? Yeah, I can put dot born, or alternatively I could have used square bracket syntax and written the word born as a string, like that. Either works, yeah? Um, I'll leave them both like that so you can see the different ways on the video, but pick one or the other, obviously, when you're writing your functions. Um, cool, I think that would sort them by age and it would do it descending. So the way it works, let's say we have... 1958 minus 1960 is that value going to be positive negative or zero negative okay so if the value is negative it will not switch them so in other words 1958 stays at the top then if we get 1960 and compare it with 1950 so if we did 1960 minus 1950 is that going to be positive or negative positive yeah so because it's positive they get switched bill murray is now second in the list then we haven't yet compared alex baldwin with bill murray so we've got 1958 minus 1950 is that positive or negative positive so it switches them again so now bill murray is at the top and that everything should be sorted. Uh, have I done that wrong? Or do we want it ascending or descending? We want it, oh, from youngest to oldest. Okay. Um, and then reverse. No, but we just need to... So maybe I've got the algorithm wrong way around. Um, <laughs> sorry. Let's just double check the sort function. And if it's positive or negative, does it switch them or not switch them? So if we do sort function, JavaScript. sorts the values according to negative zero positive so if we return the negative number the negative one's going to be at the top so i think i wrote it correctly however i explained it in reverse which is really confusing <laughs> i do apologize um yeah so this will make the what let's do it again right so we've got 1958 minus 1960 we get minus two so that leaves 1958 at the top okay this is what we want 1958 minus 90. yeah so if it's positive it's going to switch them so I think this will now sort them correctly however we haven't finished yet See what that's returned. Uh, nothing, because I haven't put a return there. Okay, so we've got Antonio Banderas followed by. Can I even scroll, please? By Alec Baldwin, so it must be Bill Murray at the end. Yeah? Cool, so they are sorted correctly. So the youngest is on top or the highest number is on top using that algorithm. Now, the key part, because we're talking about map, is I just want the names. I don't want the whole object to be returned. I just want an array of names. How do I get just part of that object? How do I transform that array of objects into an array of strings? 
firstly, what method should I use? Dot map, yeah? So if we, if we have an array of three items and we want to return an array of three items, but it's transformed in some subtle or not so subtle way, then dot map is probably the method for us. So let's attempt to do a solution with dot map. Um, pass in a function. And this function, what shall I give it as an input? Actor. actor, awesome, yeah. We had actors to begin with, now we're just looking at each individual actor. How do we want to transform each individual actor? Or what part of the actor do we want to return? We just want to return actor dot name. And that should be it. Oh, good. Apart from my elegance. Yeah, so a couple of methods. All right, first we had to sort our data, and then we use map to just return a specific part of our array, or transform our array from the whole object into just part of that object, which was a string. Are you at least seeing where there could be some use cases of map? Yeah? Array of X items to an array of X items changed in some way. So this one again jumps out at me as being map. Why? Same thing, right? We've got an array of three items and we end up with an array of three items. I know somewhere in there I need to do a mapping. Again, very similar, but this time rather than the whole name, I just want to return part of the name. So I wouldn't just map it to um, driver.name. I would map it to driver.name.split and split and have the last part of that or something like that, yeah? I'd need to split that string and just get the, the second section of it or get a substring everything after the space, these sorts of things, yeah? Let me see the question. Cool. I'll leave you to have fun with that one on your own, but of course we can go through it at a later date if you want. Can you go up to the previous question? Um, not really, can I? Because um, I've submitted it, I can... Oh. <sighs> no, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a simple answer to that. If I go back, it's not... No. Yeah, you just have to rewind the video for a couple of minutes and you'll see it again. So yeah, that, that was it really, unless anyone's got any questions. Those articles are worth a read. It also talks about the for loop and when we might use that and why we probably don't want to use that in modern paradigms. So yeah. Yeah, but um, you use the sort? Sort method, yeah. And you pass in two arguments? Two inputs, yeah, two arguments, yeah. Uh, could you pass in three? Uh, then how are you going to compare things? You do three sort of merge compare. Um, so it have to be pair one? It's a good question. It makes sense to me to only just pair one with the other and then the algorithm will sort <laughs> one by one. Yeah, you're just comparing one thing to another thing. You're not comparing one thing to the result of two other things. You probably could do if the sort method allows that, but it's harder to get the logic, definitely. Because it's a loop again, right? Yeah, so it will make sure it compares every single combination. And if the value is, I always get the wrong around, if the value is negative, it's going to move it above the other one, yeah? And if the result value of that function is positive, it moves it down in the list. So it keeps doing that, and eventually you end up with a sorted list. Yeah? And so whatever you had on 
of item A and item B, you had a minus thing. Yep. Can you do a, many different types of... Yeah, you could do any um, function so wherever you want So you always just look for a negative or positive? Yeah, positive? so... Well, it evaluates so it as a like number. A times B, like how would it know to source it? That I mean, yeah, if you did A, a times B and, and the result was a minus of those two things, then it's going to sort the first one above the second one. No? <laughs> Possibly. But it doesn't really make sense, right, to, to yeah, multiply yeah. things to get... I'm trying to, to like, other times apart from, like, bigger, ascending or descending, like, what sure. other... Sorting criteria to you, which you sort like Yeah. Um, but I'm going to... I think most of the time you're going to be using minus and you're either going to have B minus A or one minus actor one minus actor two or you're going to have actor two minus actor one depending on whether you want it ascending or descending. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's the easiest way to keep yeah. at it for now. Um, I'm sure there's more complicated I mean, sorting algorithms. Like 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 you could, could do it by the like length. length or something yeah, yeah. Or like like yeah, so if you wanted the longest one first you'd do uh, word two minus word one. just says a compare function, right? Um, and then it says first element and second element for comparison. So I suggest you stick to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, and and try not to complicate things. So this is solved by default descending? Descend, uh, sorry, ascending is the default. Okay. Yeah, so one to ten. Yeah, one, one to infinity. All right, that's it from me, guys, online. I will stop the stream.